Hey guys, so here we are in week four. This is also the week that you're going to finish up by taking the, uh, the midterm exam. So I really want to make sure you're on things. So first of all, a couple of things about chapter four. This is all about key signatures and your most important document to get you through the key signatures, which is also an extension of the scales discussion, is the circle of fifths document. So let me turn this around and show you what I'm talking about. The circle of fifths document is the thing that it shows you the connection and the interrelationships between different keys and key signatures on any instrument. So this is a really great all-purpose doc. Here's the basic idea. If you zoom in on the outside of the circle at 12 o'clock, you see a C. That indicates key of C major. It, along with the key of A minor inside that circle, both have the same seven notes in them. On the piano, though, those are. White notes, C to C. If I play them from C to C, sounds like C major. If I play the very same notes from A to A, sounds like A minor. Those guys are relative keys. Okay, that's interesting enough. But if you look a little harder on the circle of fifths, you'll notice that as I go up from the key of C to the key of G, C, D, E, F, G, that's up a fifth. Ergo, the circle of fifths, okay, it's a clock, but they're going up in fives. The key of C and the key of A minor, I'll talk about the major guys. Key of C, though, no sharps or flats in the key signature. In the key of G, there's one sharp in that key signature. Fs are sharp. So that when I play a scale of G, G, A, B, C, D, E, I need to play F sharp over here so that I'm a half step away from the one. And that's why the key of G has an F sharp. Remember from your major scales patterns, you guys, every major scale goes one, two, three, half step between three and four, five, six, seven, and a half step between seven and the next one. So that key of G, one, two, three, half step to four, cool, five, six, whole step to seven, and then half step to one. We're staying in the same pattern. Each new key is a fifth away from the last one. Key of C, no sharps or flats. C, D, E, F, G, the key of G, up a fifth, one sharp. G, A, B, C, D, up a fifth, two sharps. D, E, F, G, A, three sharps. You get it? And the sharps go up the same distance. Fs are sharp in the key of G, but then F, G, A, B, C, the new sharp in the key of D major, C sharp. C, D, E, F, G, now that's the new guy here. Everything works in fifths going around the sharps direction. Opposite direction sometimes is called the circle of fourths. C to E F. Up from C to F is a fourth, one flat in there, the key of B flat. F G A B up a fourth. The next flat in the key signature, B C D E, he's up a fourth as well. Fourths in this direction, fifths in this direction. Notice these keys down here, you guys. These are enharmonic keys. The key of C flat, seven flats, sounds exactly like the key of B, five sharps. Those guys are enharmonic equivalents of each other, note-wise, key-wise too. The key of G flat sounds just like the key of F sharp, and the key of D flat sounds just like the key of C sharp. Which one should I use? It kind of varies, but here's a general rule of thumb for you. Horn players like flat keys. String players like sharp keys. That might help you as you go forward. 12 keys, but there are three of them that can have two different names. All right, that's uh, the main stuff about circle of fifths. Please study this in your curriculum.